So um, for those who haven't uh, seen this before, this is Dynamics 365. Um, and uh, at what, where we are at the moment, we're in a Crimson housing accelerator. Um, this is uh, based on uh, Power Apps and Dynamics 365. So we have a collection of applications that we've built um, uh, over the years uh, within the housing associate, uh, the housing association vertical. And um, I'm actually using the Crimson Housing Association app. Um, we'll go on a little bit later on to the Housing Visit app to show you uh, the inspections route. Um, we're also going to be jumping on to, uh, if I can find it, the uh, subcontractor portal as well. So all of these are applications that are built on top of Power Apps and Dynamics 365. Um, and I'll just be navigating um, directly to one of my example tenancies that has submitted a, um, an NTQ. Now, I'll just very quickly show, um, you know, this is a, a typical example of a model driven app. Um, the navigation is on the left-hand side, which sort of shows you some of the areas. I'm currently in lettings at the moment, but there is a service area as well that shows more uh, information or more, more elements that specifically to do with the, the service side of things. Um, so I'm in tenancies, and I've got a certain tenancy, which is um, uh, 001008, um, and this is um, for the Unit 2 Railings Core. Now, as you can see on this top business process bar, um, this application uh, to tenancy is a process that starts right at the beginning uh, when a property is being let. There's an application that runs through and there's some certain stages that run through this. Now, within the accelerator, um, usually the vast majority of our processes or the vast majority of our tenancies are going to be at this active tenancy stage where they are actively a tenant. Everything's running fine um, and, and things are going ahead. Now, what happens um, at the point of notice given is that um, through either this one is a portal request, but through the portal or email or phone, um, the uh, uh, the tenant um, has uh, issued an NTQ. Now that comes through here and up to updates this stage to um, notice given, which is then uh, having a look at all of the, the specific areas here. So there's a there's a reason for uh, a notice reason and uh, when the NTQ was given and then it will calculate the tenancy end date that relates to to those rules, depending upon what type of tenancy type. So this one is a regulated tenancy. So what you can see here is also already on the tenancy. There's the notice it, the, the status reason has changed to notice notice given. And what we actually need to do is do some uh, pre-termination checks, uh, which would be around uh, double checking whether they um, have any rent arrears. Um, I won't step into too much of the tenancy checking element of this. I'm going to try and, uh, and fast forward on to uh, more of the void, the, the actual voids process, but just showing you that there are some checks and some ways to actually capture that those things have been completed within the tenancy process. And effectively, what we're trying to get to is to the tenancy terminated. Now, because, as we said, what we're trying to do is get away from that serial type, just one one long um, sort of stream of of, um, of work that's going to happen. As the lettings officer or the housing officer is going through the pre-termination checks and um, and approving those uh, the, the, the termination status, what's going to happen behind the scenes is we know that the NTQ has come in and we need to start the pre-voids inspections and the voids inspections. Um, so when because we have uh, the uh, this process available here running for the tenancy, we also have on the unit a uh, another process that allows us to um, to uh, show the voids process within a property. So at the moment we're waiting for the keys to be returned. If it's if there's a key safe, um, we can have those not notified as well. Um, but what we can do is um, we we can work out whether this uh, property will need to go um, to be relet or it needs to be sold. And if it's uh, selling, then there's a sort of disposal process that might happen. But for ease, we're actually going to have a look at actually reletting this. And what we need to actually do is go through um, a, a property inspection. So we need to do a void inspection. Um, the good thing is all of this can be automated. So at the point of NTQ, um, 
and whether it's at the point of the NTQs um, and the status change of the lettings record, uh, the tenancy record, or if it's once that tenancy um, uh, sort of notice to quit has been approved, um, then a trigger can happen that actually creates and schedules a property inspection uh, for somebody to go out and visit that property. So this is where I'm going to navigate to um, one of our areas, which is um, the, the housing visit app. Now, I have demonstrated um, some of this before um, doing a, uh, a visit, so a housing visit when they're currently in their tenancy. What I'm going to show you today is a void inspection. So as we say um, it here, we, we, we've got um, the, the property inspection isn't complete, um, but what we have done is scheduled that inspection. So if I jump on as uh, David Lloyd, my uh, property voids expert, I'm going to have a look at my appointments and I can see that there's a new void inspection that comes at 10 o'clock. So I'm going to go ahead and have a look at that one. So if I open that, what you'll see is that the inspection form comes up um, with uh, some general details. Um, so it's again to Railings Court, which is our, our, our property that we, we're looking at. And some of these areas, uh, it's again a, a, a sort of a, a click to go through to these different areas and specify sort of like a checklist of exactly um, you know, what needs to be checked. Um, at the moment, you know, you can navigate to bedrooms, reception rooms, kitchens and bathrooms. Um, and uh, this graphic uh, can be changed and tweaked depending upon the type of void inspections that you guys want to be covering. So what I'm going to click on um, just as an example is I'm going to click through to kitchen. And what you can see is um, a very straightforward uh, kitchen checklist um, for the, uh, the, the inspector to go through. And usually it's just checking, um, you know, are the sinks OK? Is the taps and plumbing's OK in the kitchen? Um, are the waste pipes OK? Um, do the basements look good? Um, now, upon inspecting the worktop, um, there is some actions required. So if we click on actions required, it's going to ask us to put some more information in about that specific action. What's going to happen is we'll put in this information. Um, and behind the scenes, this is going to go ahead and create a, um, a job for us to repair. So I'm just going to um, say it's a worktop repair and uh, the broken and it's water damage and needs repairing. So um, you can add some uh, details in here. What we also want to do is potentially add or take a picture of the broken worktop. Now this will then be imported into the application um, ready for a uh, the contractor to, to know uh, and view and inspect the app. What we're also looking in here is actually um, trying to link as much as we can to the schedule of rates um, for repairs so that we um, can be have greater clarity on exactly what the job might be. Now, if looking at this, um, we can see that um, you know, we've got our two choices of, of worktop um, schedule of rates. One would be the, a complete renew, so we'd actually renew the workshop or one is repair. Now, looking at the damage here, um, our, um, you know, we, we believe we actually we can just go ahead and do the repair. So car 079, which is the, the, the kitchen unit, um, uh, renew. And, and refix the kitchen workshop is is you know schedule rates back 20 quid rather than 149 pounds for a complete renewal of the, the kitchen workshop so we're trying to save and cut down well not say just be more specific around these repairs um, and the things that have to happen directly at the inspection now it's not to say that th these don't have to be completed and these can be changed at the point in which somebody would come in to do the repair maybe there's some more underlying damage maybe it was uh, the water damage had, had, had leaked through and therefore um, we would need to to do a renewal but what we're trying to do is get to that repair side um, as quickly as we can and as efficiently as we can so that um you know we're trying to save those costs so once we've once we've you know we've gone ahead and, and done that, all the others are just for ease. I'm just going to quickly um, just say that these are all good um, and they have been. Uh, 
that's the only thing that we need to to capture. Um, it's going to go back to the general details. Then you can go into the other rooms. I won't go into absolutely everything from an inspection, um, but the general concept is that it would be, you know, creating these uh, the, the a whole load of lists of jobs that come off this inspection, um, and that would be loaded into Dynamics. So if I just save and complete that record, that's me done for um, the uh, the inspection app. Um, what I can now go ahead and do is go back to the unit. Um, and if I just refresh that, what you'll see is that it's moved on from property inspection. And um, the property was uh, 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 inspected, com uh, was completed, and that was on a specific date and time. It's also moved us on to job creations. So a job has been created. Um, and the created date um, of today. So if we have a look, what we can see is um, the evidence of that um, inspection and the job being created behind the scenes. So as a housing officer, I can still go ahead and view and see this information. So as you can see, David Lloyd um, created this inspection. Um, and what you can see on here is the related work orders. So if I see that related work order, that actually gets me that um, left worktop renewal. So, so we wanted to do that scheduling in from that inspection. So now that we actually have a work order um, that is has been that has been created off the back of the inspection, we now need to go and uh, get that scheduled in. Now, this is where we use one of our other modules within the Dynamics 365 suite called um, Field Services. And within field services, I will very quickly touch on um, what th there's a lot more detail that happens on a work order. Um, and there's some other things around price lists um, and additional elements and incident types that are um, placed in. Again, we've got a business process bar specifically for this work order, which we do the work order creation and then we're trying to schedule that. Now, I won't touch on too much around the scheduling side of field services because we'll, we'll be here all day, but effectively I need to book that out and book that to my um, uh, to my contractor um, to, to, to get that fixed up. So I've got my contractor here. I can go ahead and book that um, into the schedule. And once that has been done, um, I can then, uh, the, the, the uh, contractor would then receive a notification and would be able to uh, log into the contractor portal. So that's the next stage of our journey. So just to summarise, we've gone from uh, the NTQ, picking up that, uh, um, that notice to quit. We've initiated um, the inspection. We've got the housing or the, the housing officer uh, busy working through the tenancy termination. We've had our inspector go in, do a property inspection and find uh, that a job is needed to be created, um, automatically created the job. And then our field service agent or our, our scheduler has then gone and found the right contractor and scheduled that work in. Now we can then go as the contractor and log on to the subcontractor portal. So for all of these scenarios, um, uh, I'm showing it um, as as a you know as a browser form, um, but these are all available um, on the mobile uh, side of things. So it wouldn't matter if you are um, either um, from from the, the the portal side on the browser or actually through the mobile side. What I'll just quickly do is uh, do this through the mobile. And as you can see, you can go ahead and sign in. Now, this is taking me straight to my profile, which we can update and change. But what I want to do is, as a contractor, I want to go have a look at my job list. Now, as I can see, I've got a couple of jobs, but the one that we we went went ahead and, and had a look at uh, or created was 007. So I can go ahead and see those details. And as you can see, um, it's the worktop broken, water damage needs repair. Um, it's been approved um, and I can see all of the information I need to do uh, to go ahead and do that, as well as the address information and um, the actual um, the the image of the uh, the broken um, 
uh, worktop is there ready for me to actually have a look at. So what I can go ahead and do, and I won't do it on this phone just because um, you guys, it's just easier if I show you on the main form. If we just go and quickly find that job again. Yeah. Just grab that job from here. What I can now do is I can go ahead, disappear and go ahead and actually complete that job. And what I can do is then create a job completion evidence. So. Um, fixed. Um, fixed work top and. Have a look at what I'm doing. Just make a look at that. If I can go ahead and submit that. Um, you can just simply submit and complete the evidence, or you can also um, add um, a note to that to say, actually, well, just so that you guys can see that I've done a good job, I'm going to go ahead and um, just add in um, my uh, evidence and complete job. So there you go. That's the uh, that's the, the nicely new completed um, uh, repaired uh, worktop all ready and done. So the, the good thing about this would be um, that uh, this was all um, stored within Dynamics 365, but as a subcontractor, I have my own portal that I can go and communicate with um, the, the housing associations without any emails or without any phone calls or without any missed information. It's all readily available for everybody to go ahead and complete. Um, this obviously is going to save a lot of time in, in what you're doing. Um, and hopefully then, because all of these uh, jobs have been um, completed quicker, then the void process, the amount of time that the uh, that, that we have in the void um, is going to be a lot less. So um, the final thing to do is then go and have a look back on to, um, if we go back to, uh, to Railings Court, what you can see now is it's moved on from job creation and we've actually completed that job. Um, and what we want to be doing now is having a double check um, within the, the Dynamics 365, checking whether this information is correct, um, double checking that, that the inspection has been completed correctly um, and all of this information is readily available um, to, to have a look at. If we go to the next stage, then the void process is completed, and as you can see now, Railings Core is now straight back onto the standard business process flow, and it's available to let, um, and um, we can we can get going. So we've we, we've kind of gone through as quickly as we can through the voids process, um, and at the same time, obviously allowing the housing so the housing officers to to to, to terminate the tenancy correctly, um, but these things can then stop sort of start working uh, in parallel. Um, so and then the final thing to really talk through is uh, around metrics on this because we have the uh, tenancy um, stored in the same place as the location. We have the inspection stored in those those elements and we can understand the void times of these units. Um, we can do quite a bit of metrics, which I'll just pass you over to my colleague Martin, who is just going to give you a bit of a demonstration on um, some scorecard functionality that using this information, using this data um, can be really, really valuable. Thanks, Ollie. Um, so yeah, so just to kind of pick up on that point about the scorecard. So um, so this is Power BI and uh, the scorecard functionality is, uh, is a module within uh, Power BI. So you can see here, I've just created a very simple uh, scorecard with two metrics uh, against it um, and it's very very easy to do um, so if I go and look at one of these so you can see here for example our percentage properties are void by month um, what I've done here is I've put in a target of um, eight percent and right now the current value is eight percent so we're actually uh, on track with that however if we look at the second metric around the costs, uh, our target is to reduce our void cost to um, 
£50,000 per month. Um, and uh, at the moment, we're sitting at 75. So we're not on target, but the trend is showing that it is going down. So, so month on month, that's going down by 6.25%. Um, and you can see that our target, we're aiming to achieve our targets by uh, the 31st of October on these. Now, if I go in and just edit one of these, um, what you can see is uh, this is how easy it is to actually set up. So, so what you can do is you can um, you can actually uh, put in the name for your metric. Uh, the owner gets put in automatically. Uh, you've got your current value and your final target value, and you can see we can edit that. Um, and then what you've got here is uh, you've got the ability to connect to um, external uh, data. So that would be connecting to say another Power BI report. So if you had a Power BI report built on your void data, then you could connect your metric to that Power BI report so that you could then pull that data in um, automatically. And then at the end here, you've got your start and end date. So that's your start and end range uh, for this particular metric. Just going to cancel out of there for a second. And if I go into the notes area for this metric, then you can see that it actually gives me a little bit more detail. Um, I've got some history up here. Uh, these are my status rules. So these are my rules around um, the, the metric. But what I did for the purpose of this demo was I just put in checking value. So um, so that was just a way to make it a bit easier for the demo. Obviously, these values would typically be coming live from uh, from a report or another data source that you've got for the uh, for the scorecard report. But I just cheated and, and put in some uh, some checking values uh, manually for that purpose. So that is um, the uh, scorecard functionality. Um, very easy to set up once you've got your uh, Power BI reports built or you've got your data source uh, pre-configured. So um, really in useful insight into uh, the state of play with regard to voids.